Okay, so you saw how we went through the installation process, but that last part of the installation, as it was installing everything, it gave us 15 different steps of the setup progress. Now, it's important to note that some of these steps may not be included in your installations, and that's because as we go through it, you'll see there are some steps that you may not have because of the options you chose or because of the work that you did before you did the install. For example, step number one was organization preparation. Now, if you did all of the organization prep already, then you won't have a 15-step program. That step will be unnecessary. So, if you did the organization prep through the forward slash prepare AD and then prepared the domain with the prepare all domains or one of the other switches, well, then in that case, you would not need step one. Step two, stopping services. Step three, copy exchange files. Step four, language files. Step five, restoring services. Step six, languages. Step seven, management tools. So at this point, it installed the management tools that were necessary for you to be able to work with your Exchange server, which includes things like your Exchange management shell. Step eight, the mailbox role, transport service. Now again, note, this is a specific role step. So if you installed the mailbox server role on its own, then you would see this step. If you installed the client access server role on its own, then you would not see this step. In our case, we chose both roles, so we're going to see all of the different steps. But again, don't freak out if you're doing an installation of an Exchange server and you only chose one of the roles. Don't be surprised to not see all of the steps that we saw because, again, we installed both server roles. So step eight is the transport service. Step nine is the mailbox server role, the client access service. Step 10 is another mailbox server role with the unified messaging service. Step 11, another mailbox role with the mailbox service. So a lot of services for the mailbox server role. Then with step 12, we see the client access role installing the front end transport service. Step 13, we see the client access role installing the client access front end service. And then step 14, we see it says finalizing setup with step 15 really being setup has completed, click finish. So. All of this occurs during that final portion of the install process and in some cases it might get stuck on one of these steps. But keep this in mind. Sometimes it's not that it's stuck, it just takes a little while to finish the task. For example, with the mailbox server role, it might stay at 3% or 10% or whatever for a long period of time. Just let it sit until it either finishes the installation or returns an error message your way. Because if it cannot move forward, it will eventually respond back and say, there's a problem. But if it just appears to look like it's hung, it's not that it's hung, it's still working forward. It's just that the actual progress bar may not be indicating the percentage properly when it comes to the installation. There are times when it will respond back and say, hey, there was a problem here and you need to fix the problem. And those problems can be anything from not being able to communicate with your Active Directory to perhaps not having everything properly set up on the server itself, or perhaps there's a problem with the server that you're not aware of. So at that point, you would go right into a normal troubleshooting mode and you would start investigating through Event Viewer and through the various logs. Now, let's jump back over to the server because we know that the installation worked, we know that it said that everything completed properly, but there is a way for us to confirm that the installation was correct. So, let's jump over and see how we would do that. Alright, so my favorite way to test if an Exchange server is up and running is to just go in and start working with it. And then if something goes wrong, then I know it's not working. But you can just use a commandlet to see if the Exchange server is installed. And so to do that, here we'll go to the Start screen. We'll type in Exchange to get us to our Exchange Management shell. I know we haven't worked with the Management shell uh, too much just yet, but that's okay. We're just going to type in this one commandlet. It's get-exchange server. And we'll hit Enter. And it tells us a little bit, but you can see in this format we're really not able to determine much regarding our installation. It looks good, but we need a little bit better format here. So what we want to do is we want to be able to get a better view of things. So if we put this commandlet in again and hit the spacebar, put in a pipeline, 
that's that little up and down key entry that on my keyboard is right above the backslash and so if we put that in that's called uh, pipelining it out and then we're going to type in FL for a formatted list so if you're not familiar with working with PowerShell that's okay we're going to have another lesson where we discuss in greater detail how to work with the management tools for Exchange 2013 so this is just a quick way of seeing that the server installed properly we hit enter and then from here we can see exactly what's going on on this system so it tells us the FQDN of the system it tells us if uh, the various roles have been installed true or false we see the edge server is false everything else is true here we can scroll down and we can see if we're working with a trial edition of Exchange which in this case we are because this is not a true production environment so we can see that it says true we can see the remaining trial period and then of course we can always install an actual license on this system and we can pretty much extend that so that it's not a trial edition so you can learn quite a bit by going to the exchange management shell and typing in get dash exchange server and here again we can see that the server roles are mailbox and client access okay so this is great now in the event there was a problem well if there were a problem then you would want to check the application log of event viewer on uh, the server that we're working with here the other thing that we can do is we can review the setup log so that setup log is actually found at our C drive if that's where we installed exchange so depending on where you installed exchange that's where the setup log would be there's a folder called exchange setup logs and here we have exchange setup now it's a really long file here as you can see but if you did have a problem with the installation then you can review the setup log file and search for any errors and then if you find an entry that indicates that an error occurred then you would see what the cause of the error is and you would get a little bit more detail with regard to how you would rectify that problem so if the installation did not go smoothly you want to check the exchange setup log in addition to the application log of event viewer but as you can see in our case everything went just perfect we have an exchange 2013 server set up and running and so at this point we're ready to begin configuration of this server so that it works perfectly for spy tech prime